Hi, we're in the workshop, got the stove running, it's uh, blowing and freezing outside but at least the sun's out. Anyway, we've got a new project going on uh, of which you had a taster of it in the solstice video. So what I'd like to do now is introduce you to another type of inverter, another make of inverter. This is an AB Power One and uh, it was donated by Norfolk Solar which is brilliant specifically for this project. Um, the main thing here is as systems become more popular there's a lot more second-hand gear on the market and if you're anything like me when you buy stuff you want to know something about it it's always very difficult to choose which bit to buy when it's second-hand so I'll just introduce you to these AB Power One inverters they're also called Aurora and then at least you'll know some of the facts about them So here we are, It's uh, this one is a double tracker so there are two sets of inputs and let's just have a look at the specification panel. So the, the main bits are maximum voltage 600 volts and in my opinion you shouldn't go anywhere near that. But the interesting one is it starts at 90 volts, between 90 and 580. Right, down here, twice times 16 amps. So it's quite a big beefy inverter, this. Those are the main ones. The output's 230, 50 hertz. Okay, but that's it, 90 to 580. So effectively, this would start running with four panels for 250 watt panels of a nominal 30 volts and on this system that I'm building at the moment at the moment it's got five panels on it so there you go it's got quite a wide range and it starts reasonably low which is very handy so here's the main access panel on the front just take that off We've got the two tracker positive and negative inputs, but also down in there, that's the mains connection. Very useful, easy. It can just come up through there, that gland, and you can just fix it there. No special plugs or any of that nonsense. And um, not that I know much about this, but it looks like there's some Ethernet connections there and there's a load of dip switches there. But I know nothing about that. But um, a lot of the settings you can change on this screen here and those buttons there. And we'll have a look at that shortly. And just whilst we're here, let's have a look at the inputs, the DC inputs. And there's the MC4 DC inputs, clearly defined, positive and negative. Very important to get that the right way around. If you get a second hand one, if you can get the mounting plate, it's very useful. That's the top. And so it goes this way and the inverter clips on there and then there's a screw and washer that goes into that thread which then connects with that there. So it's quite easy to mount half a dozen heavy-duty screws 
in the wall at least two and a half inches into the wall none of this half inch screw straight in the plaster but right deep in the wall and that will take it all so here's one in a dark corner as you can see there the light on the left hand side it just shows when the inverter is working so at night that light goes out and then you've got the four buttons I'm not going to show you all of this but that's escape so you press escape and press it again like that and you're back to the sun's just gone in so we're only on 41 watts now there's a little lock there and this is locked in this screen but if you press this button here it's got that whirly arrows and it will go through the menu that's to do with the resistance down to earth so we don't want to boringly go down through all this lot volts in 157 volts 0.3 of an amp at the moment into the grid the grid is 235 volts at the moment and there's records of you know what's happened and what not peak watts peak day watts etc totals there we go I'm going to lock that again now then if you press escape okay it goes to statistics and you think that's all there is okay but it's not the case if you go down settings info statistics so if you go for settings which you go enter password just keep pressing enter unless some engineer has gone and put their own password in to keep the customers out of the inverter um, so we're just going down now new cache time language v start okay you may get one of these and it seems to work fine but it won't start and it may be that on v start they put they put some ridiculously high voltage in it these had 275 volts V start when they turned up and I've changed it to 120 let's just go in and see V start 1 120 volts so it may be that uh, you have to change that to make it work I'm not going to go all the way through this men menu because there's quite a lot down so let's get out of there okay uh, down info let's have a look I've never looked in there enter all right Serial number, firmware, country code, yeah, escape. So that's the basics of it. It's not rocket science. And you press this to lock whatever screen you want to keep on there, or you press it and you get the little rotating arrows and it'll constantly cycle over the information. But I think that's the important one. And we've only got one array on this. So the other one has got nothing connected, which is why it says naught. Uh, one last thing before I uh, finish this video. Your inverters need to be out of the sun so they can stay cool and they need plenty of ventilation. So putting them in the loft in a house 
not a good idea especially if it's a modern loft which is quite small and uh, in the summer you'll get all the heat of the tiles and whatnot they need to stay cool the cooler they stay the longer they'll last because they've got capacitors in them and capacitors when they start getting warm they start to dry out so keep them cool or cold and they'll last a lot lot longer there again the same thing applies to um, how many panels you attach to one of these if you're running them at half bore uh, then they'll last a long long time but if you run them near their maximum then it will cut down its longevity